My next guest says it's like being in a car speeding down a cul-de-sac. Looks good right now, but there's no place to go. In this environment, he's looking at stocks that are already oversold. Joining me now with some picks is Chris Crisanti. He's chief equity strategist and senior portfolio manager at MAI Capital Management. And CNBC senior mark markets commentator Michael Santoli is here as well. How do we steal you from the New York Stock Exchange? Once in a while, I like to make a little bit of an appearance over here. Glad to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, a day like this especially. Yeah. Do you have any first-level thoughts, Mike, about the kind of market structure this afternoon with First Republic doing what it's doing, but everything else in a holding pattern? It's a very split market continues to be. Um, Microsoft's gain is accounting for more than the entire S&P gain at wow. the moment. Um, the regional banks index has been very conspicuous in not being able to rally much uh, to date, although it is up a little bit today. So there's still this sense out there that uh, FRC is its own situation, uh, but it doesn't really resolve the overall question, which is this very stop-start nature of the economic data and what's already been priced in. A lot of the cyclicals have already taken some pain. It's not clear if they've taken enough. Before I turn to Chris real quickly, do you think Microsoft is up as much as it is because of earnings or because they maybe killed the Activision deal? Um, it's mostly earnings. And it's mostly the excuse that analysts found in the comments after the, uh, the earnings report to raise estimates a little bit. And I think they're getting a huge growth premium because growth is scarce right now. And, you know, the AI energy is still running through that stock. So I, I think Activision, keep in mind, only it's a it's a 70 billion dollar proposed deal on a two trillion dollar market cap true company for, for Microsoft. Well, Chris, you've got MAI capital management. This could be very valuable uh, over the next couple of years as this AI craze really picks up. But where are you looking in the market specifically right now for opportunities? Well, well, as you mentioned, Kelly, it's a really tough market. I, I do think the economy is like a like a car speeding down a cul-de-sac with, with really no place to go with things really, I think, set to slow down over the summer. So what we take, instead of buying broadly or expecting growth in the usual areas, let's find the good companies that have already gotten kind of the stuff and knocked out of them. And, and we like two stocks in two really quite different areas, one in healthcare and, and, and one in housing. So um, the first one is Danaher, which got absolutely creamed yesterday. Yeah. So put it into a zone for us to buy. So it was down 9% yesterday on what I would call a, a COVID hangover. Danaher made lots of stuff for testing for COVID. Obviously, that's that business is basically falling off a cliff, you know, thank God. And But, uh, you know, this is a short-term couple of quarters issue. By year end, it should be fixed. Danaher provides incredibly uh, complex stuff for the, both the testing and the development of drugs, and those are getting more complex as the years go by. So it's a chance to buy Danaher right now at, at a low that you haven't seen since it became a pure play in healthcare about seven years ago. Wow, it had been, you know, a, a big favorite stock lately, and, and I love how, you, you know, few people say it's so bad that we were excited to buy it. What about Black & Decker, too, where there's lots of concerns about where we are kind of in that cycle? Sure. Sure. And it, as you know, and, and on this show, I've, we've talked before about buying the housing stocks now mm -hmm. almost a year ago. And we bought them because when interest rates started to go up and mortgage rates started to go up, uh, they got the tar knocked out of them. So they were down 40, 50, 60 percent. But lo and behold, people are still buying houses, even with mortgages at 6 percent, 